Hey guys, it's Chris here with Big Cobra Gaming. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how crazy the GPU market is today. Roll the intro. I'm just kidding, there's no intro today. So I'm not going to bore you guys with the ins, the outs, but we all know that the GPU market is absolutely fucked today. I mean, you can't get your hands on cards, and if you can, you're paying three times the normal price. I was getting into this problem a couple of months ago when I was trying to get my hands on a 3060 Ti, because in my opinion, that's just such an excellent bang for the buck GPU. So I'm gonna go through with the progression of my cards a little bit, tell you how I made a little bit of money by selling off some GPUs. Before I get into the nitty gritty of it, I didn't do this to make money. I just wanted a better GPU. And luckily for me, I had a pretty good succession of purchases that really helped me get to that spot. So a couple years ago when I actually got into gaming, I started off pretty simple. I went with an RX 580 8 gigabyte Armor Overclock Edition. So at the time, I was really just a video editor, so I wanted to get into gaming a little bit, and I knew that my 8700K could actually run Fortnite at like 50 frames, which is pretty cool with its onboard graphics. But I, you know, I figured if I wanted to play some games, might as well get a graphics card. I had friends that game, so I'm like, you know what, let's just go for it. So I call up my buddy Rich, the man knows everything, he's in about uh, computer parts. So I'm like, Rich, what's my what's my first card? Where do I go with this? So Richie's like, don't worry, I got a buddy. He just finished up doing some Bitcoin mining. This is back in 2018. And he's got a couple of extra cards laying around. I picked up this RX 580 for $150, brand new, still had the plugs in the ports, had the plastic shrink wrap and everything. So I'm like, oh, this is great. Nice low entry point, get some bang for my buck. It was a good card. You know, it did what it had to do. Um, especially on Fortnite, I couldn't even hit 100 frames and I had a pretty good system with 16 gigs of RAM, 8700K, like I said. But after a while, maybe less than a year, I'm like, I need to get something new. So from there, I really start researching my options to see what is best for me. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just get into it, spend a few more bucks. So I spent $200 on an EVGA 1660 Super with six gigs of RAM. And I'm like, you know, this is good. It definitely felt like a midline card card it only had a HDMI a DVI and a display port so you didn't have a lot to work with so by this point I'm past Fortnite and I'm deep into Call of Duty Warzone so Warzone was tough I was still pulling since that was such a demanding title still is I was only pulling on my better times 95 frames I still wasn't breaking 100 so I jumped up in game you know demand and my performance generally stayed the same because my game demand went up with how good my card got burning through temps my temps were terrible I was getting the 70s up into the 80s and it just wasn't a good scenario for me. Full swing through the pandemic. It's late 2020 coming into 2021. I wanted to get into the streaming thing. I wanted to get into the YouTube making business again, and I wanted to do more. So I'm like, you know what? Let's give it a try. I immediately started having problems with my 1660 Super. If I wanted to game, stream, record, and hop in a Discord all at once, my system would just crash. The, the game would crash. I was getting blue screens in my system. It was not working well, it was overloading things. I didn't have settings set right in my OBS either, which didn't help, but it got to a point where I couldn't even boot up my Call of Duty Modern Warfare to play multiplayer. So I was like, something's gotta change. This was at the beginning, you know, this was really um, pr uh, pre the boom that we're experiencing right now. It's like November, December of 2020. We're just getting into this crazy GPU spike that we are facing at this moment. It'll reflect in the numbers I'm about to tell you guys. Before I tell you the next card I bought, I'll tell you what I saw my last two cards for. So when I got my 1660 Super, I kept my 580. I kept it in a second build and then I just eventually kept it on the side. You know, I'm like, you know what? It's a good card. Maybe it'll come and play again. Who knows? I got the card brand new so I knew there wasn't a lot of mileage on it there's long and short of it is so I bought that card for 150 I sold it for 250 I'm jazzed you know and this is all through eBay by the way I'm buying it's like all this through eBay I thought I'm killing it like the market's great luckily the RX 580 is an excellent mining card from what I understand it flew off the shelf like hotcakes and I was able to sell my 1660 super which I bought for $200 I ended up selling it for 315 all American which I was over the moon about I couldn't believe that I got such money on a car that I thought you know would either stay the same or go down on releasing of new generations of cards with the 3000 series I thought all these cards that I you know these two cards I have they're gonna be absolute garbage by the time that 3000 series comes out and that ended up not being the case we've seen time and time again before I sold my 1660 super I ended up picking up an EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 Ti 8 gigabyte blower style card which I was absolutely jazzed to have I bought that card that 1070 Ti for $350. I gotta tell you, even in today's day and age with our titles, I was running everything that I needed to run with recording. 
I record my streams at 60 frames, 1080, 60. It was working like an absolute dream. Temps were holding, even though the blower style card is not optimal for cooling down your card. It still did everything I needed it to do. I was jazzed. I had it. I loved it. I was beating the hell out of it, working the card, and I was dream, not even thinking about getting another card. Did I still want a 360 Ti? Absolutely. But I had something that was holding me over. I spent 350. I'm like, you know, the 3060 Ti is $400 anyway. I'm like, you know, I saved a little bit of money. It's all good. So to this point, I'm seeing leaps and bounds in performance from card to card. I'm going from the eight, you know, I don't know have the numbers in front of me, but from the eight gigabyte RX 580 to my 1660 Super was this much. And then from my 1660 Super to my 1070 Ti was this much, all based on the GPU GPU user benchmarks. That's how I like to evaluate all my cards just to make sure I'm getting the best performance for my buck. So I'm peachy keen with my 1070 Ti. Richie calls me up, who also at this point is a 1070 Ti. Better version, it's an ROG Strix, which means the cooling's insane, it's got a factory overclock and you can push it even harder, which is amazing. These cards run incredible, worth every penny. He says he calls me because he's a, he's a fiend now. He wants to keep buying and selling a little bit. It's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. I gotta tell you, making a little bit of money and getting great cards. He calls me. He's like, "Hey, Chris." I'm like, "What's up, Rich?" And he's like, "I found a guy in New York City, and he's got three brand new in the box, shrink wrapped 1080 Ti's." And immediately my jaw is ah, like, "Oh my God, how's this possible?" And just for comparison, here's my 1070 Ti numbers here, and then my 1080 Ti numbers here. That's the, that's what I would go up in performance. And I'm like, well, how much does he want for them? And he says, he said he's gonna take 400 a piece for them. And I'm just like, oh my God. And of course I didn't even get a chance to say yes. Richie's like, I'm buying these cards, do you want in? And I'm like, you know what? It's game time, let's do it. Two of the cards ended up being Asus ROG Strix 1080 Ti 11 gigabytes, which is the top of the line version for that 10 series. It doesn't get better than that. One of them ended up being a three fan, MSI card, which ended up giving it to another buddy of ours. At that time, then at the making of this video, a brand new in the box 1080 Ti, uh, I'm sorry, ROG Strix 1080 Ti on eBay specifically are listing for well over $1,000. And Richie says, we're gonna go get this from this guy in the city, 400 bucks a card, and we're gonna go get it tonight. Deal of a lifetime. Rich goes, gets the cards, bring them back, and then I'm, we're peeling those suckers open that night. It's one in the morning, we're cracking them open. I'm, I, I never thought I'd get a brand new in the box GPU, let alone something as elegant as the 1080 Ti, even though it is, you know, about four years old, to get it brand new is pretty incredible because 1080 Ti, it's held its, it's held its value so incredibly over time. So this is a GTX series car. I mean, it doesn't have the RTX architecture. It has some limitations. It doesn't have DLSS like the newest cards have, which help bump your frame rates in high intensity games, and especially in 4K. And it doesn't have certain features with the um, NVIDIA software to be able to cut out my background and stuff like that. And I knew that going into it, and I'm like, listen, you know, I know what this card do, can do, I know what it can't do, and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not gonna get my hands on a 3060 anytime soon. It's now been three months since I've had this card, and there's still no no shot of getting a card. I mean, they came out with the 3060, I know the 3070 Ti is coming out soon, and it's just there's no end in sight. Performance wise, the 1080 Ti performs 3% better on GPU user benchmark than the 3060 Ti. So to me, it was a no-brainer, and I really scored the deal of a lifetime. And God forbid, if you can find a 1070 for under 400, that's probably the sweetest spot. If you're an average gamer, a 1070 Ti, and you wanna get 144 frames in a game, all day, you got it, no questions asked. Bottom of the line, my 580 and my 1660 Super sold so well because they have certain qualities that are valuable to the crypto miners, and that's booming on that end. Gamers are getting their hands on cards like 1070 Ti's and 1080 Ti's because they're the only thing that's available right now for high quality gaming. And in my opinion, to spend something, any money on a 2000 series card, absolute waste of money because one, they're all overpriced and two, they all underperform. At the end of the day, you have to understand what your gaming needs are and what card is gonna get you there. Watching videos like this is really gonna help you understand how much horsepower you need to run what you're doing. That's something I didn't know going into my gaming setup. You know, when I was upgrading from my 580 to my 1660 Super, I thought I was hopping leaps and bounds, which I was, I think it was about 25% I was going up, but that still wasn't enough. And it just kept me treading water, especially now, every year games are gonna get more intense, they're gonna get more, uh, they're gonna get heavier in their gigabyte load and their workload. So at the end of the day, every card's gonna phase out. It's just a matter of optimizing the cards that you do have and how long you have them for. But that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. 
like this video, hit the subscribe button, tune in next week for another video, catch you guys on the flip side.